Yo, this is it on the place. Chrono Trigger. The frozen cliffs. <laughs> Cold place. Yeah, so we are here now, going to continue to get past, get some more treasures before we go to the final stage of this vortex. That means we have to keep on going down around the paths. So you went down on the right last time, what if we try this one? Could be worse, right? Maybe it is, we'll find out. Go down around here, we can go to our right here. Go for a oh, regular high potion. Yeah, not everything can be a massive thing, guys. So that's fine. Sometimes you get big loot, sometimes you just feel like, oh, wow, waste of time. We go down here again, only path we can go. And now, what place should we go this time? We went to the far left last one. Now we want to go to the far right. And drop down. This place. Go inside here. Now we've been a different place here. If we go down here, you'll drop down. We have some, what, octopus enemies? We haven't seen this one since the, the um, future. Interesting. Alright, that was pretty interesting. Um, let's go to the left here. And now we're inside some interesting cave, the Winding Passage. We're actually back here, guys. The Lost Sanctum's Winding Passage. This place is in the Dimensional Vortex as well. This place is really about playing with our brains. But we also can play with them because we get the Venus Bow. The ultimate weapon for Marl. So what's so good about the Venus Bow? Yeah, it has really crap attack power, but the point is, you'll always deal triple seven damage. It ignores everything of defense, even immunities, doesn't matter, it will hit for 777 damage. So it's a very cool damage thing. This is a nice way to just make sure if you have to deal damage with something that has high defense or anything, more just going to say, screw you guys, I don't need, I don't care about you. It's going to Marl saying that, screw you guys, I win, you do, you do not. Alright, let's just continue here, something else we can get, there's a treasure chest, but I don't think we can reach it. A turbo ether, which is uh, very nice. I always like this kind of treasure. Now here we go. We get a mega elixir, which is always nice. Once you can collect the old treasure in the winning passage, you can just basically go back and you end up here again. Wanna fight them again? I guess we have to. And they've been taken care of. We can move on falling down this slope. Collecting another high ether. I'm going to the cave we want to, we can fight some of these uh bone things. Can we even go down here? We cannot. We have to continue. Okay. I guess we have to fight some bone things then. Mr. Bone Warrior and his uh, octopus friend. They went down for the count and we can continue. Hold on here again. This is where we were last episode. So we can continue up here. This is the place to go if we want to finish um, the zone. We're not done yet, we still have to get some more treasure. So we actually want to... Actually... Let's actually go continue. I think actually the last treasure chest is actually on this place. So here we want to just keep going forward. We want to try to stick to the bottom right. Because that's where the treasure is, for the last piece of equipment that we need. Let's see... Where can it be? Oh! This place also has a lot of nice capsules. You can see there's uh, at least two more here we can collect. And here we have an interesting enemy. Remember the Hecron? It's back! And this one is much more fierce. Say hello to the Snow Beast. Think about the Hecron with Ice Stamp instead. That's the Snow Beast story. 
And every time you deal damage to it, normal attacks, it will become stronger and stronger. So you want to actually want to make sure you take care of him in a very nice manner. Beast toss. That should work, right? Yeah. Toss, 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 and up in the air and crash landing. A bit of a wimp. But it can be interesting. I mean, this is kind of recolored. I like this recolor mini bosses They're coming back to life. That's how you should do it in these games. More enemies to come? Oh, these two show up and more Bone Warrior as well. But not everything can keep us down. Of course not. We're just gonna fight back and deal even more damage. Let's grab this speed capsule as well so we can continue. go around this path. Remember to check the map in case you get lost. That's the way you win here. Bottom right. Here we get it. The Regal Gown. Oh yeah. So remember we got the other Regal item last time, the Regal Plate, which is the ultimate chest piece for the guys. Well, actually should I wear that? I don't know why I didn't wear it. That doesn't matter. The Regal Gown is the female version of the Regal Plate. And then not only that, look at that. Doesn't have this ma ma fancy section stuff, but look at that. This is all damaged by one third. Yeah, this thing is a kick ass. But this is all damaged by one third, means it has auto protect and auto barrier at the same time. That means you'll be quite tanky with that on. It's really, really nice. Except for that, though, it's just more of a defensive item, but. It's fine, it's not like you need to have everything to be super amazing. That's cool though. Continue moving on here, we have another snow beast. Fight him if you want. I'm just gonna not care. We have some more enemies to fight though. We have bone warriors and a chaos mage. Okay, we can fight. And we took care of them, we can continue down here for the last slope. Now remember we fought a snow beast last time? Yeah, that one just walks around, poor little guy. I wonder what they're, if they're doing in this place, like all lonely is walking around like crazy. Walk to right here for the final part of the frozen cliffs. Doesn't mean we're gonna be doing nothing though. Because now we're gonna fight up against not one, but two snow beasts. Oh dear. So, strategy here is basically the same as just a regular one. Just use a very strong dual tech or triple tech to take them, take one of them down at least first. I'm gonna use ice two as us, times two. Taking some damage, but not that dangerous. Nice counter there from Isla. Chrono, well, he can. Let's just uh, frenzy the other one. So, first, Isla. We'll toss him up in the air. Of course, every time he takes damage, he will increase his own power. That's also why you need to be careful, because he'll just become stronger and stronger and be dangerous. To electrocute in the end, Let's see if we can maybe take him out both. Probably not, we can try. He took down the bottom one at least, the, the, or the top one, the, the one wants to live until there. We'll look at the XP, the 4,400 XP. Yeah, so if you actually want to level up in this game, exit and come back and fight them over and over and over again. This is probably one of the best places to level up. In a few moments, in a few moments, like a half an hour maybe, you'll be leveling up quite a lot, so... It's pretty cool. Let's just go up here. And here we are on the top. This is basically where we had Chrono being resurrected, sort of. When you're ready, move ahead. We teleported away. And now we are into familiar territory. It's time to face one of those epic encounters. But what will it be this time? Well, I can already tell you what it is because we have to be ready for it. Because Luca was in the fierce in the future. And if you go down here, you will go back to the, the antiquity time. But don't chicken out. This is the moment you came for, to fight some extremely important enemy.
we move on though to the little party swap. You kind of know who's going to be next if Luca was one of them. The next one is... Marl. Marl is the next one we're going to fight or her shadow version. Luckily though we already have a Venus bow on. Now for Marl, who's also a magical attacker, if you really want to make sh be sure you can survive Marl, put on some gear that is all about surviving against water damage. So if you have blue plates and ready and maybe some other things that reduces water damage, then you'll be doing really well here. So uh, Marl is going to be having a high magic defense. Um, the team I'll be using... Um, I hope maybe I should use this team. I Marl, Chrono, and Robo. Uh, could probably even use uh, Isla if you want to. It's uh, it's sort of the same. Um, but it's more important that you at least have something um, something important to just fight off really good here. Now, one thing you want to make notice is make sure the other party members you choose, for example. Uh, Chrono and Robo are the ones that can survive. I'll give the blue plate to Robo because he's sort of having trouble to stay to to take damage now that everyone has the same HP as him. Let's just keep the magic defense because there's a lot of magic attacks from her. And of course this one is just set down. We can probably give him uh, Soaring Letters just to give him more and more damage. Even the Dragon Armor for even more damage than that, but yeah, it's up to you. Yet you lose some speed by doing that, so I think I'll keep the sword letters just to get the speed. And before we go, let's just use a potion. I mean, why not use a potion? We have some. But we can probably use some high ethers onto Marl. And then we can go on. When you're ready, move forward, and this will happen. I feel something calling me. I, I have to go. And then you have to go, and yes, you have to choose your party again. So again, pick your party. Marl must be chosen, because we will fight the shadow version of Marl. So in my opinion, it doesn't matter who you pick. Probably one of the cool combinations you can go is, for example, um, with Luka, and you can do a tripod damaging move. You can do Magus with some other cool stuff as well. Isla does well with Beast Toss. Come up to you, but... In my opinion, um, I think I'm just going to go with this setup right here. Now look at this way though, unlike the other fight, you can actually do and do some setup to your team. We are here basically at the Castle Dreamscape. So you can still change your equipment of, the cl of your party members. But I think this one will be the one to go. Um, you can probably even give um, Robo these, these spectacles to give him more damage, but I think this one is fine. Once you're ready, Move ahead and be ready to fight. Here she is. Who are you? Are you me? She is you and she's gonna fight. This one is called the Alabaster Shade. And just like Luca, this one actually can deal some nice damage to you by just physical forms. Alright, so. This one can be a bit annoying as well. She does a lot of damage, like Luca. She actually does more damage than Luca, but this time she's alone. There's no exterminator here like last time. So in my opinion, use some powerful dual text or even triple text if you want to. But just in my opinion is just go with regular text. And frenzy is probably the good one. Now be aware though, Marl has a really high evasion, so don't be fooled if you just keep your damage. Uh, getting missed. That scat can happen, but that's fine. We could have some haste. You can do that. You can probably haste up our party members. Here comes our ice fall. Doing some good ice damage. As you can see, Robo gets a good healing. Kron takes a lot of damage. Again, I sacrifice some of his stats to just make him more powerful. You can even just attack with Robo now. Here comes the haste on the Chrono. Quick now. Robo misses. Got another frenzy attempt. That's pretty good, but again, you can miss at times, so 
don't be angry if you miss. You can see in her attack still does pretty good damage, so be careful. Try to have a party members at least above 500-ish, because she can still be very nasty. At least Marla is forced to be here, so you at least have someone who can rest party members in case they fall. So That'd be nice. Just make sure Marla herself doesn't fall. That's why the reason Chrono is wood, because Chrono can rest as well. But uh, can I say that uh, Marl has her full life ability, which is much better, of course. The rapid fire fist. You'll miss. Damn you, Robo. Let's do frenzy again. Get rid of attack for everybody. Miss. Hits and hits. Ice fall again. Means uh, Chrono will be taking a lot of damage. Yeah, and Robo just gonna get himself healed. And you can see damage she does to Marl as well with regular attack is very damaging. She likes to counter a lot as well, so we have to be careful. Another frenzy. And of course since we have these two together we can do an aura beam, which is very nice. Or in a cure wind if you want to heal even more. Probably now we should be a time to do a cure wind because since it counters a lot, she does a lot of damage. More damage than Luca and Exterminate did, just that she is a bit easier to kill. She doesn't have a lot of health left actually. Be healed up to full. Your ice fall coming. Damage is still pretty nasty. But we can maintain it. Let's pump a more uh, frenzies. Bit hard to hit at times, but that actually is it. It's a very simple battle, it's the easiest of the three. And Alabaster Shade, aka Dark Marl, is beaten. And just like the Crimson Shade, Marl gets stat boosts. Mars latent powers awakened. Speed accuracy and stamina improved. And just like the last one, we have been thrown out and we are done with the vortex of the antiquity. That means we're down to one more vortex, guys. When we go through that vortex, something special is going to happen at the end of time. And that will lead us to the final episode of my let's play Chrono Trigger so not that we're not long before we're done guys but we still have a bit more to do but very very little and then we'll see what the future will bring for us like comment and subscribe follow me on Twitter Twitch and Facebook and that's coming for now see you guys next time as my journey in Chrono Trigger continues